Hey everyone, and welcome to this episode of 15 Minutes to Merge. With us this week, I have an amazing colleague, Zach. Zach, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Great to have you here. So welcome to the show. We're going to talk about some awesome stuff about inner sourcing today. So why don't you tell everyone who you are and what does you do for GitHub? Yeah, um, I'm super excited to be here. My name is Zach Copert, um, like she said, and I'm here to talk about inner source. So um, yeah, inner source uh, is something that I do every day in my job, which is why I'm here to talk about it. Awesome. So let's go ahead and talk about what is inner sourcing because I've worked a lot in open source, but inner source is new to a lot of people. Yeah. So open source is actually a great place to start. Um, and so if you think about the way that open source works in terms of people, all developers all over the globe um, working together uh, and communicating in this asynchronous way um, to be able to accomplish, you know, building the world's software. Um, inner source is really similar. You take all of those ways of working and that pattern of openness and transparency, and then you just lift that out of open source and move it to the context of a company or organization and say, how could we operate more like open source, but inside of our um, organization for things that aren't maybe appropriate to open source? So lots of sharing, transparency, uh, and reuse. Awesome. So why would a company want to do this? Because I think it's a lot of work to change our working methodologies, whether we're embracing kind of a new way of working. Why? What's the what are the benefits for an organization? Yeah, so there's a couple of them. Um, the main ones that um, we've experienced at GitHub and our customers as well when they work to adopt InnerSource is efficiency, uh, networking and engagement uh, with employees and, and in between developers. Uh, and then just the quality and security of the projects that you're working on when you're when you're reusing those, the, the quality and security gets improved quite a bit. And those are super important things. When we're developing software, how do we develop better software more securely with better quality, uh, especially in this kind of technical, this climate in the technical arena? So how, how does this apply to people? How are we doing this at GitHub? How are we enabling organizations to do this with the GitHub platform? Uh, yeah, so um, at GitHub, all of those benefits are important to us, and so we, we chase those all in a different way. So that's the efficiency, the, the networking and engagement and the quality. Um, but the way that you go about that, you can't just say like, okay, ready, set, go, be more efficient, right? So <laughs> we try and focus on uh, other means to be able to get us to that efficiency through, through inner source. So um, if we're trying to adopt that open source way of working inside GitHub, what we've done is uh, taking a look at our visibility. Um, you know, do developers have visibility into other repos uh, within the GitHub org? Um, and I, I know this is not a, a secret, uh, but all the GitHub full-time employees have access to the github.com code. Um, when, when they join, they're able to see that code, which means they're able to reuse that code, learn from that code, contribute bug fixes to that code, even if that's not their main job. So they have that visibility. Uh, and then the other two pieces are once things are visible, then it's got to be usable and it's got to be discoverable, right? So um, we'll start with discoverable because uh, if you think it's visible, well, I've discovered it, right? Well, okay, but scale this to the whole company, right? At GitHub, we have some like three or 4,000 repositories um, and they're all visible, which makes things not very discoverable, right? <laughs> because then it's like, well, which one do I want to look at? So uh, being able to tag things with repo topics and... Um, and uh, maybe create a, a portal uh, to be able to show which of these are inner source projects that you can like work on and which are kind of more custom built just for this one thing. Um, and then that leads right into usability. So the, the usability pieces is that they've, they've seen it, they've discovered it and, and got some inclination that it's reusable. Now, how do they actually use it? How can we optimize that um, uh, quick uptime to be able to say, I'm just going to plug in this library. I'm just going to, you know, uh, use this component. Um, so that means that you've got to be able to have documentation that is readable, that shows like what the project is actually going to do and can help the developer decide, is this the project that I need for the component that I'm trying to build or the feature that I'm trying to build? Awesome. Do you have examples of how we do this with GitHub? Um, yeah, yeah, I can I can think of a couple. So um, one um, that we uh, could look at is by sort of zooming into a 
community, a language community at GitHub. Um, so at GitHub, we obviously use Ruby a lot, which is what uh, GitHub is built on. But we also have a lot of um, GitHub services that are built using Golang. Um, and in the Golang community at GitHub, there's its own Slack channel of folks uh, surrounding around, uh, oh, I use Git, uh, Golang in my service. And, and so those people have built a, a community um, and they're sharing modules back and forth. And so there are things um, like uh, observability. Everybody's service in GitHub needs some level of observability and they're working on this Go project. And so the collective need or the inner source need, right, is how do I do observability at GitHub in a Golang project or service? Well, okay, there's a module that somebody has built to be able to do that. And then now all of the folks that are building Go services at GitHub can share that module, add on to that. Oh, this works for me, but I need to change this this thing. So um, so that's one example of, of uh, quite a few that I could dive into. Do you have some like some content that people could see how to get started or examples that we could show them? Uh, yeah. So um, one one thing that we could show them um, in order to get started is uh, to focus on that um, uh, discovery piece. If I showed you a demo on visibility, you would see me like mm -hmm. adding people to repos, which is not very interesting, <laughs> uh, and creating teams and stuff. So um, discoverability is a bit more interesting when. You start looking at uh, tagging repositories with topics. What kind of topics do you want to use across your organization? How do you get people to catalog all these things? And then how does that all roll up into a um, like an inner source portal where people can go and say, these are the projects that are all inner source ready. They're ready to be reused across the organization. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got the inner source project portal um, that we can take a look at. And this is actually... Um, SAP has gone and built this and open sourced it so that folks like us can use it, which is great. Um, so huge thanks to them. Um, and I know a lot of our GitHub customers use this as well to be able to sort their inner source. So um, on the real quick on the back end and the context for this is that there's a crawler that goes and looks and sees which of your GitHub repositories have the inner source topic on it. And then it collates them all, gathers information on them, and then presents them here. And it's really uh, easy to set up. It takes me about 15 minutes to do this um, with a, a, a new customer every time that I help them set this up. Um, and so essentially what we're looking at is a GitHub page um, that is um, the, the portal that developers would go to to be able to search for something that they could reuse. So the analogy here is, is that each of these planets or uh, moons um, that we see here are inner source projects. Um, so you could think of that as like, okay, Earth, that's representing the, um, the observability uh, Go module that I was talking about earlier, and so on and so forth. And then it's got some information about each of these. Um, well, okay, it's JavaScript. That's not going to work for my Go project. I can actually come up here and like filter by language um, and say, okay, well, here's, that narrows it down. Uh, here's the Go projects. Um, and I'm actually <laughs> looking for one that, you know, um, uh, has to do with uh, crops. Okay, well, you know, this this uh, planet or or moon has something to do with crops. Uh, but in in the real life example, you know, it would be something like observability, um, and and then you would have all of your lists here show up of what projects match that. Mm -hmm. So that's really helpful to streamline for developers this way of easily searching and filtering um, the reusable projects um, so that they can get going and get the job done. Uh, the, and that's, you know, back to the efficiency um, that we talked about. Absolutely. And getting started is always the hardest part, right? So it's cool to see that we can create something like this where we could have that, that, that ability to see everything across in our organization. Again, yeah, we have several thousand repos in our org and a lot of enterprises have a thousand, several hundred, many, many repos. So, um, mm -hmm. so why isn't everyone doing this already? Like this seems like such a no brainer. Yeah. Um, so I, I think a lot of it comes from like our conditioning as humans. Um, because there's a couple of inner source articles about uh, how as babies, <laughs> we're already taught things about inner source, uh, about sharing our toys. And there's this natural inclination of mm -hmm. like, I don't know, I need to hoard my resources. Right. And then we see that reflected in organizations where, um, you know, uh, departments and, and, um, and, and those types of large groups inside of an organization hoard resources. So, well, we need to be able to you know, focus on these problems with our resources and control our outcomes. 
Um, so essentially the bottom line is nobody likes group projects <laughs> and, um, and we're sort of taught that in a lot of ways. And so in software though, in open source, we've seen the magic of like what happens when you can tap into all of these different skill sets from all around the world. Um, and, and so the inner source is like, how do we make that magic happen inside the organization and unlearn some of the, uh, group project is bad think, uh, that, that we've built up over the years. Absolutely. And I think we all accrue like technical debt and, um, poor patterns, uh, bad habits, right? We've all developed bad habits. So I think that also helps us learn and grow, yeah. right? And continuously understand what others are doing, maybe how they're doing it a different way or maybe in a better way that we can learn from. I think that's really important. Um, and I think anytime we're looking to change the way we operate, it's hard. It's hard to make changes in those organizations, but hopefully we do it with an end game and goal, uh, end game kind of insight of what we're trying to achieve. Absolutely. Yeah. It takes a lot of vision to be able to implement something like inner source, to be able to say, there's a different way of doing this. Like you said, the change is going to be hard, um, but we're going to work through this change or make this change because we're seeking these benefits and sort of keeping your eye on the prize about like, do we want these benefits and is that work worth it? Um, and, and then inviting everybody to, to join you in on that journey. And when I say inviting everybody, uh, I, you know, uh, back at GitHub Universe, we talked about like Accenture having like 50,000 developers. That's a lot of everybody <laughs> to get on the same page. So uh, yeah, it definitely takes a strong vision. Absolutely. Well, Zach, awesome. Um, I learned a lot about inner sourcing today and why it's really important, how to create that vision within an organization. We're going to give everyone some links to some blogs and our inner source documentation to help them get started. We'll share those in the description in the show notes. So Zach, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, Lots of learning about Intersource, really excited about it. And I'm excited to see how everyone out there watching is adopting Intersource. So leave your comments below and looking forward to hearing it all. So thank you, Zach, and join us next time on 15 Minutes to Merge.